Hello and welcome back. Uh, real quick here, just showing you my uh, status of the weathering. Um, what I'm using are oil paints, uh, you know, just regular cheap oil paints from the art store, thinner, and that's what I'm using at the moment. Uh, so just to show you, I don't know how well the camera picks up, uh, but first I apply a little bit of a black oil wash uh, and then remove some of it from the middle of the panels here so you get that little shadow effect, kind of the shading around the edges and the panel lines that you see here. I don't know where you can, the camera picks it up, but I think you can see it there. Um, that was my first step. Uh, second step, let that dry for a couple of days and came back uh, with some additional oil paints. And I don't know what you can see here. I start in the back and the sides here. Uh, you see all this grime and streaking here. Uh, so these are just uh, different uh, colors. Um, blue, yellow, white, uh, burnt umber. Uh, just uh, little, literally little pin drop size and just with some um, the... Um, uh, paint thinner and the brush just streak them down and, bl and blend them in uh, to give me all that kind of a uh, dirty uh, streaky look uh, that you see here on the sides that I started. The other side I haven't done it yet so there's no streaking here as you can see. Apologies for the glare since it is uh, clear coated and oil paint is kind of glossy even with uh, reflected indirect light that I have here in the room. Um, you still get that little glare. But anyway, that's where I'm at. Um, I'll be right back after I finish the uh, weathering on the uh, vehicle on my next step. All right, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, another quick update. Uh, doing a little bit more weathering on the uh, vehicle here. Um, so this is a combination of oils and some clay wash um, just to give it that kind of dirty, sooty, dusty look to it. Um, there'll still be, I'll still probably do another layer or two of uh, weather effects on it after I finish the model with all the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, tools and stuff on it. Um, I did start, I put on the wheels, I did start on the uh, tracks. Now here's the first track, just using a little bit of tape here just to hold it in place for right now. Um, so in the instructions, it really doesn't tell you how many links to use uh, for the tracks. Uh, I counted the here, and it seemed to be, I think, 36. Uh, that's what I used, which is uh, two of the sprues uh, that I provide. Um, but putting it out in place, it's really... A couple of links long, if you can tell. So probably only need uh, 34 of those links there, give or take. All right. Uh, now this link, and just remove this. Is once you put it on, it's actually is kind of semi-flexible, workable in a way. Now putting these on, uh, assembling them a little bit tedious. All these parts here, and just zoom in a little bit uh, so you have in this part of the track and then you have these which are the uh, little feet uh, you see the three little dots there uh, which correspond to these three little dots you see one two three let me see if I can point that a little bit better so you see one two three one two three uh, so these click into here this clicks into here uh, and holds it in place uh, more or less by friction and then this you glue it on uh, and then holds it all together. Now when you're gluing it on, you got to be very careful. You only need to put glue into this one center spot, not on the other two. And that's going to hold that to here, and then it clamps everything together so you can have a somewhat workable, flexible track, as you see here. All right, so it's a little bit tedious. You just got to be careful about gluing it on. Anyway, so that's my update, and I'll be back uh, in another few days. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.